reading is from Psalms 34, 1, 2, and 3. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Yes. My, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall there the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name together. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Let's get ready to praise the Lord this morning. Amen. How many has come to praise him? With lifted hands and her with thanks, we've come to give him praise. We shout of joy. We lift our voice. We've come to give him praise. With lifted hands and her with thanks, we've come, we've come. Let's praise him this morning. Praise him from the bottom of your soul. Bring it up. Amen. We've got to praise him in the morning, in the middle of the night. So let everything with breath say it's all right. We've come to praise him in the morning, in the middle of the night. So let everything with breath say it's come on, church. We've come to praise him in the morning, in the middle of the night. So let everything with breath say it's all right. We come to praise him in the morning, in the middle of the night. So let everything with breath say it's all right. Let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. praise. We lifted hands. Enter with thanks. We come, we come to give him praise. With a shout of joy, we lift our voice. We come, we come to give him praise. We come to give him the praise. We come to give him all of our praise. We come to give him the praise. We come to give him. All of our praise. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, church. When are we going to praise him? We've come to praise him in the morning, in the middle of the night. So let everything with breath say it's all right. We've come to praise him this morning, and in the middle of the night. So let everything with breath. Say it's all right, let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Come on, church. Let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. We're lifted hands. We're lifted hands. We enter with thanks. We come. Oh, 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 oh. child of joy. We lift our voice, we come, we come to give him praise. We come to give him the praise. Yes, we have, we come to give him all of our praise. We come to give him the praise. We come to give him 
all of our praise. Yes, hallelujah. Every time I call, and is it true that you are thinking of me? Oh, how you love me.
praise. We bless you, Lord. We give you praise. Lord, you're worthy. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Lord, you're worthy. Great is your mercy. Your tender mercies I see day after day.
your hands and thank him for his grace. Yes, Lord, yes. Just begin to thank yes, him for his mercy yes, in your life. Hallelujah. Thank him for his blessings. Just thank him for his love. Thank you for healing you, saving you, delivering you, setting you free. Let me see. 
for you. Reach over, get somebody by the hand, tell them, I believe. I receive everything. No, 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 no. Let's, let's say it like we do in, in Arkansas. I believe. Tell somebody. I believe. I receive everything he has for me. Glory to God. Amen. How many of you believe you receive everything he has for you? Amen. Are you, do you have a holy expectation that something good is about to happen to you? Something marvelous. Something mighty. Something beyond that that you're able to ask or think. Something mind-boggling. Something mind-blowing. Something heart-wrenching. Something devil-chasing. Something awesome is about to happen to you. Would you turn around, give somebody a Holy Ghost bear hug, tell them I love you, and it's good to see you in church today. Would you tell them that? Come on, give them a Holy Ghost bear hug. on give them a holy ghost bear hug i mean i mean a holy ghost bear hug one of those one of those love hug bugs i believe i receive do you receive it today you believe you come. Amen, amen. Wow, God has got something in store today for you. And we thank God for you today. We believe something awesome, something good is going to happen to you today. Because the Bible says every good and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father above. There's no shadow of turning in him. And so you're blessed today. I want to give you a very, very heartfelt love of God welcome to this service today. Those that are viewing by live stream, welcome, welcome, welcome. If I can use the old adage, we welcome you once, we welcome you twice, we welcome you three times in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You're welcome. First time visitors, we love you so much. So glad that you came by to enjoy the presence of God with us. And you are in store for a life changing experience today. <laughs> Amen. You are in store for a life-changing experience because the Holy Spirit is here and wherever he's present there's always change taking place so welcome today and we thank God for you so much we're going to move along and give you a chance to uh, give and sow into the kingdom of God how many of you believe in giving and sowing now I know the skeptics tell us that you know, it's not going to work that the economy is bad and jobs are tight and all of that. But how many of you understand we live according to God's economy? And his economy sometimes just don't make sense, pardon my. Because it would seem you need to hold on to keep what you have. But Jesus said if you release it, and give it, I'll increase it more. Amen. How many of you understand that in these days, the just shall live by faith? Not by what you see, not by what you feel, not by what you hear in the news reports. 
not by what the latest economical trends are but the just shall live by faith faith in what God has said well, so I want to urge you I want to encourage you let's continue to give continue to sow because God is getting ready to bust this thing loose in an awesome way you say I've heard that before I know you've heard it before but now it's the season of manifestation. Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. So I want to urge you to give. And then after the offering today, we are so excited about hearing from a man of God that I know has been with Jesus. Brother Tommy Thompson is going to be ministering today and I know the word is going to be rich. So get your hearts prepared to give in the name of Jesus. And then get your hearts prepared to receive the word of God. Amen. Amen. Pastor Joyce is coming. Let's give God a big God bless you. <laughs> Pastor Joyce. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What an awesome God we serve. Everything I was going to say, he already said. So you don't have to listen to it twice. Actually, the economy around the world is in a mess. That is good news for the kingdom of God because that means that when the Lord begins to pour out on us the blessing going to be blown away and drawn into the throne room of grace and it's coming real quick. <laughs> I believe that God is about to pour out things that we have never even imagined. His word says, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. And he loves. And, you know, we can't even love him without knowing that he loves us. It's a gift. Even our love for him is a gift to us. And the more we uh, are in his word and in his presence like this morning the more we understand his great love and he asks us just to release to him what we have so that he can release it back to us in abundance and overflow Luke says give this is Jesus that's speaking Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, wherewithal withal, it shall be measured to you. So as you give, it comes back, and it goes back and forth, and it's awesome. In Second Corinthians 6.6, 6, it says... Not 6-6. Six, six. Now I can't remember. But it says, at the, at the very end, <clears throat> oh, what, what, whatever you measure out will be measured back to you. A man who gives sparingly will reap sparingly, but that one that gives generously shall reap generously and we should give not out of obligation, hallelujah, hallelujah. but cheerfully, because God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And he says he is able yes. to bless us with everything that will yes. cause us to abound yes. in every good work. Yes. When you get home today and all next week, you should do a word study on that abound. We are abounding. <laughs> and it's time to give as unto the Lord. We give our tithe. That's his. We have no right to claim one penny of it. Ten percent belongs to God. Our offering is for the poor and those that have a need. And that 
is going to be so full and overflowing that there won't be anybody in Hot Springs that this church Hallelujah. cannot meet their need. I believe that's coming. I believe the Lord is about to pour out his blessing. The seed is a seed that we name. It goes into this ministry for uh, special things. But for us, it's a way of coming to the Lord and saying, I'm sowing this seed into this good ground, and I know I will reap a harvest. And you will exceedingly abundantly above all that you can think or ask yeah. the Lord will give you blessings mm -hmm. and those blessings spill over everywhere you go Hallelujah. when you walk yeah. into Walmart you are a blessing God. and that's awesome you just need to walk like that Hallelujah. I am the blessed of the Lord and I'm bringing a blessing with me Lord everywhere God. I go Hallelujah. finally our mission giving goes to the mission in Africa and our own personal mission right here down the street, church. Yeah. Those, those uh, ministries are a little different than ours. We yeah. consider ourselves a hospital and a refuge. Mm -hmm. A place for healing and restoration. Yeah. Growth. Equipping. We equip the saints for the ministry. Yeah. The ministries that we support go out into all the world and preach the gospel. We send them out, and they're doing an incredible job. Yeah, Thousands yeah, yeah. are being saved Hallelujah. in Africa, Hallelujah. and even here on our streets in Hot Springs. Yeah. So I encourage you to give to church and the mission in Africa, and do it as the Lord lays it upon your heart to do, not out of obligation, yes. but cheerfully, because God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I 
love you. You're worthy of all the honor. Yes. My God, you're worthy of all my praise. I don't know how you can love me. How you could give me so much mercy. You didn't have to die for me. Way back on Calvary, but I just want to thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you ready for the word of God? Amen. I said, are you ready for the word of God? Yes. It's my privilege, my pleasure to introduce to some and to present to others God's mighty man. A mighty man, a man of integrity, a man of character who's come with the word of God to speak to us today. And that's Brother Tommy Thompson. Would you stand and let's give God a big God bless you. And let's say preach, Brother Tommy. In Jesus' name. Bless you, brother. This one? That's right.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Just settling down in the anointing. Praise God. Yeah. God is good. Yeah. The psalmist said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercies endure forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. How many redeemed in here? You know why he wants you to say, I am the redeemed of the Lord? To remind yourself and to let the devil know where he stands. <laughs> he don't stand when you're around, praise God. You are redeemed. You are bought with the precious blood of Jesus. You are mercy sought and blood bought. The redeemed of the Lord. I say, I am the redeemed of the Lord. Whom he has redeemed from the hand of of my enemies. You've got enemies in this world, but bless God, they cannot stand against the power and the might and the power of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to talk about speaking the Word of God. You see, the Word of God is what? Alive. It's not an old history book. That's the way I was raised. It was something that sat on grandma's table. It was that big. But nobody touched it. <laughs> don't touch that. Oh, don't touch that. Oh, my. And by all means, don't write in it. Oh, my goodness. I done, I done broke family tradition. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mine's so written up, I can't hardly read it. Praise God. But the Word of God is alive and it's powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing asunder between soul and spirit and revealing the very thoughts and intents of our heart, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're just getting started. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I hear you're a, uh, a fireball preacher. <laughs> well, you know what? All you got to do, all anybody has to do at the beginning of the day is say, this is the day the Lord has made and I choose. I make a choice. No matter what's going on, I'm going to rejoice. I make a choice to rejoice. Amen, Brother Red. Hallelujah. I make a choice to rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. At the beginning of the day, we start out with the Word of God. Hallelujah. It is what? The breakfast of champions. It ain't Wheaties. I used to think it was Wheaties. It's the breakfast of champions, praise be to God. Hallelujah. God intends for you to reign in this life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, I can't hardly wait. We've got to get into this. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to be talking about favor today. They have sung many songs today about grace, and grace and favor go hand in hand. They are the same, really. Same Greek word. Grace and favor. Hallelujah. Well, God wants you to have all you can get and more. Hallelujah. Favor will change insecurity into confidence. The apostle Paul went about preaching the word of God all over the hills and everywhere. And he went about telling the good news of grace. He was an apostle of grace. He was an apostle of favor, praise God. And everywhere he went, he preached it. Hallelujah. He went over there to the Ephesian elders and started talking to them. He said, yeah, it's true. I am going to have to go to Jerusalem. They prophesied over me. I'm going over to Jerusalem. But I'm going to, before I leave, fellas, I want to give you something. I want to commend you to God. I want you to be 
just filled up with God and having all of God that you can receive into yourselves, praise God, because you, you're going to need God. Hallelujah. I commend you to God and to the word of His grace or favor, which is able to build you up and to show you your inheritance among the saints. Whew. Are we blessed or what? The word of his grace. It's able to build you up. I sit in many services and got beat up and not built up. But now today, praise God, I'm here as a messenger from God to build you up. I've got confidence that he has sent me here for this very occasion, praise be to God, not because I'm a hotshot preacher. It's just because I spent time with Jesus this morning, praise God, from about 4.30 to time to leave, and, and, and hallelujah, and he said, now come and deliver this message to this people on this day, hallelujah, and let them be built up and let them receive their inheritance in Christ Jesus. You see, that, old, that prodigal son, he, he went out there and got messed up, amen? Yeah. Everybody knows that, that story. Yeah. And he come home. Well, today, maybe a bunch of folks are gonna come home. They've been away, they've been straying, praise God. But maybe they're gonna come home today. But the, 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 when you said everything a while ago, God wants us to have everything. He told the elder brother, he said, I'm always with you, elder brother, and you're always with me. But I want you to know this. Everything I have belongs to you. Say, everything God has belongs to me. Yes, I receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In the beginning, God wanted a family that he could bless. Genesis 1, 26 to 28 Glory to God. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion, authority, over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So here we see in this pa these passages of Scripture, he has made man in his own image, after his own likeness. Basically it means an exact duplicate. An exact duplicate. You see, family, he's the father. And he has created all of us you see, we've been through the recreation. <laughs> we've been through the recreation. Amen? See, thank you, brother. Yes, sir. How'd you know? God. Yes. <laughs> but you see, he wanted a chosen generation. Not the chosen frozen, but a chosen generation. You are that chosen generation. You are that royal priesthood. You are that holy nation. You've been called out. You've been mercy sought and blood bought. You see, it's none of your doing. It's just God's gift to us. It's the salvation message. Praise be to God. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He said, I am, I have the anointing. He said, I have that anointing and it will destroy your yokes and lift your heavy burdens off of you, praise be to God. 
Jesus said it this way. He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. It's good news, amen? amen. Hallelujah. Preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to set at liberty those that are bound, to open the blind eyes. Hallelujah. And all those that have been bruised and abused all their lives, he said, I want to restore them. I'm looking for you. He said, I'm looking for you. I'm searching you out this morning. I'm looking for you. And I want to lift the burdens. And I want to destroy the yokes. You see, when he destroys a yoke, it can't be put back together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants to still set the captives free. Do you understand that he has given to us that same ministry that he gave to them, the disciples in those days? Praise be to God. You see, it doesn't matter about your intelligence. It don't matter what school you went to, what, what seminary or cemetery you graduated from. Praise be to God. It does not make one bit of difference, brother. Hallelujah. Paul, oh man, Peter and John healed that man at the temple gate. Upset all the religious crowd. Praise God. But they listened to what he had to say. You see, it was a notable miracle. That's what this world, that's what Hot Springs, Arkansas is looking for. A notable miracle. And then they will listen to the miracle message of God. Hallelujah. That he wants to set the captives free. To heal the broken hearted. To set at liberty those that are bound. Open the blind eyes. And we will preach the year of Jubilee. You know, one miracle will set this church on fire and people will be jumping in their aisles and praising God and saying, yes, surely God has been in our midst. Hallelujah. You see, where God is, there are miracles. When those folks went to church, they were expecting something to happen. They said, Lord, grant unto us. Let our eyes see and behold Miracles, signs, and wonders. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Healings in the name of your holy child, Jesus. Did you come to church this morning expecting something to happen? Praise God. Or are you just going to play church the rest of your life? Are you going to ride that to the glory? I'm telling you, we need to get up and praise Him. Hallelujah. We need to honor His presence in this building today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Glory! Hallelujah! Glory! In our image. He said, in our image. We want to make man in our image. In other words, we want somebody that can do what we do. Not sit around and grumble all day long but no to look at every problem and every difficulty and every circumstance in life to look at everything with praise be to God this too shall pass for greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world we are more than conquerors through him who loved us and gave himself for us hallelujah praise God Ain't nothing too big. Ain't nothing too difficult for my God. Jeremiah said, Ah, oh, Lord God, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and your outstretched arm. I'll tell you, God, there ain't nothing too difficult for you. You look at every situation, every circumstance, every sickness, every hint of poverty, everything that you look at, we must decide it ain't going to stay. But the, it's subject to change. All these things are temporary. They're about to change. Hallelujah. It's good preaching over here. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's free. 
And God blessed them. Oh, and God blessed them. Ephesians 2.10. Now here's where the new creation started. For we are his workmanship. It's, he didn't create us all little cookie cutter things. No. Well, each one of us is unique and different. Thank God it'd be boring if we all acted the same. But there are certain things that we should all follow. And that's the Word of God. Hallelujah. We just got different personalities to carry it around with us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what makes life interesting. His workmanship. It's like Michelangelo creating the... What did he do? He painted the Mona Lisa. Hallelujah. See, I get by with a little help from my friend. But he, but he had... He created each one of us individuals. There's people out there that I can go preach to and, and they'll get saved just like that. And healed or whatever or delivered or whatever. And then there's folks that won't listen to me but they may send my wife. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo. Or Brother Roger, Brother Jim, somebody, one of you. Tina, Billy, hallelujah. He's got somebody lined up to receive what you got. Created in Christ Jesus unto or for good works. What kind of works do you reckon he's talking about? Well, let's go on and finish. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. An everyday occurrence with God in our lives, praise God, we should be having works displayed before the world to see in every one of us the good works. And you suppose, Brother Jim, he's talking about John 14, 12, Jesus turned to them and he said, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh man, I got glory bumps running all up and down. He said, the works that I do, Brother Curtis, shall you do. He told his disciples, he said, follow me. Do what I do. Watch me. Watch how I work. You see, as a son of God in Romans 8, 14, he tells us that we are the sons of God. And you know how to tell a son of God? He's led by the Spirit of God. You see, when Jesus came to those disciples in the flesh, he, he walked up to them and he said, Hey guys, follow me. Quit fishing. Quit doing what you're doing. I got something better in life for you. Praise God. I want you to follow after me. Hallelujah. Yeah. You understand? He's saying the same thing in the Spirit this morning. He's saying the same thing in the Spirit. He's saying, follow after me. Watch what I do. Watch me work. You see, he told the disciples, he said, he said this, he said, Hallelujah. I can of myself do nothing. Jesus said that. I can of myself, John 5, 30, he said, I can of myself do nothing. But what I see, I do. What I hear, I'm just kind of paraphrasing. That's Thompson translation. What I hear, I say, I speak. And what I see, I do. I didn't come to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. So that's not hard. That takes the pressure off, doesn't it? Yeah. Follow the Spirit. You see, it's time that the church started living the heart life, yeah. uh -huh. not the head life. No, I didn't say head life, I said head life. <laughs> I don't know why I thought of that. I'll keep y'all on your toes. You won't want nobody to go to sleep. But hallelujah. The heart life. You see, Jesus came to live in our heart. And sometimes what he's saying in here, your head will have fits over. 
But you know what? We got to override on the head. <laughs> I override that. I'm going to follow what the heart says. You see, I had this whole thing outlined and it's gone. <laughs> We're going to preach it anyway. Hallelujah. You see, you understand that each one of you are special to Him. You are special. Special. You are special. You see, He doesn't have the inner circle. You can choose. But there are those who just choose. <laughs> What's Jesus doing? That's where I want to be. Mm -hmm. I don't want. I don't. Don't even ask me to go to a dead church. Don't. Do not ask me to go to a dead church, because that means that Jesus has got up and walked out. If He's there, you will see. You will see miracles. You will see signs and wonders. You will see healings in the name of His holy child Jesus. Are you looking for? Do you need a miracle? He's here. And you are special to Him. He does not have any favorites. Even though I would like to tell you, I think sometimes I'm His favorite. I look. But no, He loves us all the same. What He's doing in my life, He will do in your life. Hallelujah. He doesn't leave anybody out, praise God. During the campaign, I, I needed $500, I thought. And I said, okay, Lord, we were sitting on the bed. We do daily devotionals in, in the morning, but real early, about 5 o'clock. And, 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 and we're sitting there on the bed reading the Word and reading the promises of God. And going over favor, 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 favor every day, every day, every day. And I said, Lord, Father, I need $500 to do some airtime on the radio and this and that. And uh, the next day or the day after, the next day, uh, here come a check for 1000 Out of nowhere, where I least expected it. And you know what he said? He said, Hey, listen to me. Wake up, boy. This is what I'm calling exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that works in you. You see, we don't want to leave that off. There's power working in you and you and you and you and you. There's power working in you. His name is Jesus. You see, Romans 8, 11 says, it's the same Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead now lives in you and quickens, makes alive your mortal body. I am 64 years old. How many 64-year-olds you think can, can jump around and bounce around and, and do karate chops and all that stuff? Hey, listen. This afternoon, I won't even look like the same man because I'll be done pulled that recliner. Hallelujah, that handle on that recliner. And I'll be out while the football game's on. Hallelujah. But you know what? When it comes time to minister, you've got the power. You've got the power. You've got the power in the name of the Lord. I need Brother Roger to sing. I'm not in my form today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But he said we ought to be walking in them. That's a daily walk. A daily walk in what he did. Hallelujah. First thing we want to do is 911. No. J E S U S ought to be the first one we call. He always hears our prayer. He's never hardly early, but I'll tell you one thing, he is always right on time. Right on time. 
I've seen the fever leave. I've seen the, the bad stomach go away, praise God. I've seen all that. I've seen, I've seen people raised from the dead. I wasn't going to tell you that, but I, let's throw it out there. I, I just heard a message on Christ in you, the hope of glory. I'm on my way home from church, and we stop, and there's a wreck. I had to climb up into the vehicle. And the little girl, about 21, wasn't even breathing. Now, I ain't planned this out. And I ain't nobody any different than you are. We all get up in the morning and put our britches on. Amen? But we all better get up and take Jesus with us. But I heard this message and I was fired up, man. I mean, I'm on my way home. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. If I lay my hands on the sick or whatever, they shall recover. I didn't know, I didn't know this girl was dead. I said, okay, she wasn't breathing. I said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, the, I believe that my hands are just like jumper cables. And when I lay my hands on something, the power of God that's on the inside of me, that Christ in me, the hope of glory, will, will flow out of my hands like jumper cables. Hallelujah. And she says, <gasps> and I, I, I don't know, I climbed back down, and here comes the ambulance, and, and uh, she was okay. But I didn't know she was raised from the dead till later. She said, she said, Brother Tommy, I gotta tell you this. I ain't told nobody. But I'd already left my body. And I was floating up. I done got up about twenty foot above that car. And when you laid your hands on me and said, In the name of Jesus, I had to come back into my body. Just like that. Little babies with, with uh, spinal meningitis that the doctor said they won't live through the night. One of them had turned blue. Her little eyes had, about six months old, her little eyes had gone back into her head just like nothing. And she's just barely breathing. And me and her granddaddy was a faith man. And, uh, you know, it takes, you need some faith people to hook up with. And she, when I, when I walked in the room, I'm not, I'm not bragging on me. You just follow Jesus. You understand? You just follow Jesus. He said, well, what are you doing here? I said, well, I didn't come necessarily to the hospital for you but, or here, but for anything except, you know, we were here for another person and, and God let us in here. And he said, well, I, I know God sent you. Huh? Heart life. Heart life. Remember... Not head knowledge. Yeah. I said, okay, brother, what's up? Our little daughter, our little granddaughter uh, is laying in there with spinal meningitis. I know God sent you. Let's go in there and pray for her. Okay, let's go. And so we went in and we formed a little circle around the bed. Grandparents and parents and, and the little girl. And I, now, I ain't no great faith man, but I shut my eyes because I, couldn't, I couldn't, could not look and have faith to pray, so I just prayed. I said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you're raising, I don't know what I prayed, you know, you just, again, you're listening to your heart. Yeah. And in Jesus' name, and before we got to the end of the prayer, I felt that baby moving. I mean, really moving. And she was just laying there lifeless. You know what? Her color came back. Her eyes were focused on us praying. She done kicked all the covers off, man. I'm telling you, that baby, and the doctor said, we've seen a miracle. The world is looking for a miracle. There's a miracle back there. Charles, Brother Charles, hallelujah. We went into the hospital, prayed for him. I mean, but looking at the situation, you think the man's going any time. Your head says, and I say, shut up, head. <laughs> Got them head lice again. Shut up, head. Just, just shut up and pray. Hallelujah. Pray. I need to pray out of my heart. And then we felt this peace coming over us. Hallelujah. They'd set him in a room to die. Then, and I think it was the next morning he kicked the covers off of him. And said, Hallelujah. And, uh, and he said, hey, I'm hungry. I need something to eat. He lived through the night. I mean, I think he died. How many? Five times? Six times. 
look what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise his name. Well, each day he's just the same. I'm going to praise him. Look what the Lord has done. You see? Hallelujah. It's not hard. My little five-year-old grandson, I wish he was in here. The other day he said, Papa, I need to know something. He's smart as a whip. Man, he said. I said, what's that? He said, uh, Papa, how do birds make their nests? I said, well, that's a pretty hard question. But, uh, you know, all I can tell you is that God put the know-how on the inside of God created those little birds, and every one of them knows just how to build a nest. I said, I'd hate to think about the nest that I might build. <laughs> you know what? And he said, I said, you know, I think they, they, they go out and they gather these little twigs, and they put some of their own feathers in there, and they... They've got saliva that comes out of their mouth and it kind of like, like glue that webs it all together and everything. I said, isn't that amazing? That little bird, he can't do anything else except have little birds. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. But he has to have that nest in order for that little bird to survive, that little baby to survive. Right. You know what? Brother Jim, when I got saved, I got a new nature. You see, I don't have to work at being a, a loving person anymore. I hated everybody. I hated myself. I had another nature. I had a dark nature. I had a nature of sin and death that was on the inside of me. You know what? And I did exactly what I wanted to do. And I mean, I lived it to the gusto for all the gusto I could get. I was 100% devil possessed. That's right. Well, dogs, when I walked up in the yard, dogs would go, Woo, and get under the house. And uh, <laughs> you think I'm kidding. I'd try to hold a little baby and they'd, they'd be just as nice as they could be. <laughs> well, I began to realize there's something different about me. But when I got saved, when I got... When I asked Jesus to come into my heart, I got me a new nature. The old man that I was died. And there was a new man raised up. Jesus preceded all this with his own preaching. He said, he said, Nicodemus, you must be. No, you see, there ain't no other way. There ain't no other way up. Hallelujah. You must be born again. It ain't no, no, it ain't none of this Buddha and all different kinds of ways to get to heaven, praise God, or to be born again. There's just one way. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He gave me a new life. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things have become new. Hallelujah. I am his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. It's an exciting life. It's more fun than drinking and carousing and running around. Oh, man. I was a redneck special. I had one of them easy rider rifle racks on the back of my seat and I had a case of beer always iced down in the cooler and, and looking and a, uh, man looking for a place to have. It's a wonder I got grown. Hallelujah. A bad thing looking for a place to happen. I had a buddy that we'd go out and try to pick fights. Thank God we didn't start anything. But we got we we'd go home after we couldn't start a fight we'd go home and fight each other. <laughs> How crazy can you get? That's what alcohol will do for you. Man, it's a crazy life. It's dumb. <laughs> when you got Jesus, it's the greatest high you can ever get on. Hallelujah! I'm telling you, 
Oh, yes, it's greater. It's he's higher. He's higher than any, any high that you can get on this world. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Oh, I guess we ought to get back to the message. John 17, 22. Well, it's time to quit. And the glory which thou gavest me, who's he talking about? He's praying to the Father. Jonathan started this last week. <laughs> Didn't he? We just, this is part two of what Jonathan started. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one even as we are one. Now, what's he saying? The glory which thou gavest me. Now, you know, I ain't no rocket scientist. I gave up on being a brain surgeon. And, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. Are you a them? Now, he's saying the same glory. Now, y'all correct me if I'm wrong. Is it the same glory? I got an amen over here. Is it the same glory? then if you got the same glory, then you can do the same works. Yeah. Huh? Is it not the anointing? Okay, glory and anointing are the same. We're all in agreement. Okay, no excuses. Nobody's going to leave with an excuse, right? He said, the works that I do shall you do. Oh, is it because you're something, you know, uh, you graduated from... Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary? No, as a matter of fact, I had to relearn everything. <laughs> because they were trying to tell me that all them Egyptians drowned in three inches of water. Well, man, I'm going to tell you what, that was a greater miracle than, uh, than what happened. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'd go home, I'd almost be mad. <laughs> It would be, because I... And we took a professor out behind the barn, so to speak. And he was saying, you know, if, if you pastors now, if you run into trouble and you got somebody acting crazy, you need to take them to a psychiatrist. I'm going to tell you what, I didn't go to no psychiatrist when I got saved. You know what? They need to get saved. We saw a homosexual in prison. I'm talking about real homosexual. I'm talking. <laughs> and, and I thought, we need to cast the devil out of that. So I was set, man. I mean, you done cocked it. I done cocked the trigger. Loaded the gun. I'm ready to cast the devil out of it. And that pastor said, come here. He called him up. He said, what was his name? God. Anyway, they they breast Mitchell. Mitchell. That's right. Anyway, he's this tall, and so uh, he said, Mitchell, you need Jesus. You need to receive Jesus tonight as your Lord and Savior. And he 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 led him into prayer to receive Jesus as his Lord and Savior. The man changed instantly. See, all things, old things are passed away. All things have become new. We watched that man transform before our eyes. It wasn't no act. It wasn't no show. He just said, how you guys doing? <laughs> That's right. Jesus will make a man out of you. Jesus will make a woman out of you. He'll make you to be all that you can be. I ain't talking about the army. You get in God's army. Hallelujah. You march behind the commander in chief. Who is this king of glory? Open up your gates and let the king of glory come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty in battle. Yes. 
He whooped the devil in his own backyard. Amen. For this purpose, Christ Jesus came into the world that he might destroy. He is a destroyer to the works of the devil. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Sickness, disease, poverty, homosexuality, drunkenness, drug, whatever. He can destroy it in an instant. Who is this king of glory? Oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, same glory you got on you. Who is this king of glory? Oh, yeah, he'll spread it out amongst us all. Hallelujah. He wants us all to have it. He wants us all healed. He wants us all transfigured, transformed. Hallelujah. Into the very image of Christ Jesus. Praise God. He's looking for a holy nation, a peculiar people. And this means that not weird. We're just special. <laughs> a special people that we should show forth the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, something got a hold of me. Has he got a hold of you? Man, I'm having so much fun. I've always heard so much fun is a barrel of monkeys. I ain't never seen no barrel of monkeys. I'm still having fun. John 12, 26. Oh, that lady. I'm glad you're still there. Jesus said, if any man serve me, let him follow me. Again. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. And later, Paul said, I call you no more servants, but sons. See, we all became sons. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. I said, I better look that one up. That word honor. Y'all ain't, yeah, you're going to believe it. I started saying, you ain't going to believe it. I, I quit saying that. I, he said, my father will honor you. There's that word favor. To prize. You're his prized possession. To hold you of great value. I was like, he, Brother Curtis introducing me. I said, who's he talking about? <laughs> he holds you of great value. His beloved one. You know, the Apostle John was always going around saying, hey guys, I'm his beloved. Now you can tell your friends, I'm his, I'm his beloved. His dear one. Oh, this is... Oh, man. Y'all fixing to have a runaway now. His precious one. Can you? Did you know that Greek word had all that in it? You're His precious one. Do you know in appraisal work, the value of a property is basically determined by the price that's paid. Your value and your worth to God is the price that it took to purchase you. You're His purchased possession. He bought you with His redeeming blood. How high a price was that? I'm going to tell you what, if you could take all the gold and all the silver and all the money that's in this world and set it on one side, it would be like pennies compared 
to the blood that was shed for your salvation, for your deliverance, for you to be called his valued possession, his most valued possession. He's been searching for you. He's been seeking after you. He wants you to know just how much you mean to Him. You see, God is always the God of abundance. He's always the God of abundance. If it took $10,000 to buy you, He would have paid and did pay in equivalent a hundred million. So you see, he's got you covered. He's got you covered. That price was always more than enough. And when you ask him for a favor, You see, that's what he's saying when he said, come boldly to the throne of grace. Favor. That you may obtain mercy and favors and gifts of all descriptions. Remember, he said, everything I have belongs to you. James said, you have not because you ask not. Because you're thinking that too lowly of yourself when you're, you should be thinking... But, Lord Jesus, I see how much you love me. I see how much you care. And if you've got burdens, he said, cast all your cares and burdens on me because I care. I'm the one that's going to have the power to do something about your situation. Don't try to... That's why he said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge Him in all your ways. All your ways. I'm married to the, one of the most beautiful women in this building. I don't want to get my plate broke, Brother Neil. But I'm married to the most beautiful woman in the world. You are so beautiful. <laughs> To me, you are so beautiful to me. Can't you see? Oh, that had to be the anointing, praise God. Then I call her up on the phone and I say, I just called to say I love you. I just called to say I really care. I almost forgot that one. But in all your ways, I am married to a beautiful woman. I have two beautiful daughters. Hallelujah. I have five wonderful grandsons. Hallelujah. In all my ways, I acknowledge you, Father working in our lives to, to build and help build a, a family. Praise God. Except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain to try to build it. Praise be to God. If God's in the middle of your house, he, we do dwell in the secret place of the Most High. We abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is our refuge, our fortress, our God in whom we trust. Surely He will deliver us from the snares of the devil and from the noisome pestilence. We abide under His wings, under His feathers we do trust. His truth is our shield and buckler. Hallelujah. He will direct your path. He's, what did he say? Follow me. Follow me. Follow, whoa, I mean going off of there. Follow me. Follow me. Follow him in the word. You'll see footprints. The Holy Ghost will say, 
Turn over here and read this. I got something I want to, a special, real special that I want to show you. You see, the Lord is my shepherd. I am not in lack. No lack. The Lord is my caretaker. He takes care of me. He is my provision. He is my protector. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the light, my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the light of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Therefore, I can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Hallelujah. He'll take you through the pages of that word. Hallelujah. And bring instant reminders to where you should be following him. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What kind of battle do you face? We're going to wind this up. Romans 5, 17. For by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace, favor. you got to receive favor. It's not going to fall on you like my hat and my rice at a wedding party. You got to turn around. I've been watching a lot of football, y'all. You got to get in a stance. You got to get in the position to receive a pass. You got to get in a position to receive this abundance of grace, this abundance of favors that God wants to pour out into your life. Hallelujah. You've got to get in a position to receive it. Hallelujah. One thing is to fall on your knees and say, as Paul said, I beg you, brethren, I'm begging you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as living sacrifices unto God. This is your reasonable worship. Not being conformed to this world. You see, you're going to have to say, goodbye, world. Goodbye. Not being conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind. Wouldn't it be good if everybody got this tape? Yeah. Or video or whatever we're doing here. Wouldn't it be good if everybody took it home, wrote down all these scriptures and study and study and study until it became a part of you. You see, you are a partaker of His divine nature. How? By these great and precious promises, you receive His nature, His very life and ability and power that He wants to put on the inside of you to be wonder-working power. The kind of power that will raise the dead. The kind of power which you, if you meditate on it day and night, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and you shall not be moved and everything you do shall be a success. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, sound like Jerry Clark. Grace, abundance of grace, favor, and the gift of righteousness. And the gift of righteousness. You can't earn righteousness. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every lying tongue that rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. You shall condemn. This is our inheritance. And God said, and your righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. I'll take care of it. I have assumed the responsibility for all of your past sin life. I nailed it to the cross. All the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. 
You see, the devil walked up and down in front of that courtroom as the prosecuting attorney. And he said, look a here, look a here. I got the goods on them. They did this and this and this and this and this. I got the goods. This is what happened. This is what they did with their life. They deserve death. They deserve poverty. They deserve uh, their life to fall apart. They deserve everything that's under the curse. They deserve it. And then our attorney for the defense, Jesus, stepped up out of the crowd. And he said, Father, I'll pay the price. And he paid it in full. They didn't even let him be crucified in the city. They drug him outside the city gates and hung him on an old rugged cross. And there he bore our sins in his own body upon the tree so that we, here's to where we come in, so that we being dead to sin, you know what? We need to get dead to sin. We need to get dead to the world. We need to get dead to, to ungodly living. We need to get dead to it. So we being dead to sin might not live any other way except unto righteousness. We are who He says we are. We can do what He says we can do. And we'll go where He says to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Preach this gospel worldwide. Around the world, we'll preach it. Yeah. It's grace, for by grace are you saved. By favor of God, you have been saved. Oh, yeah. And that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Yeah. It's a gift of God. Hallelujah. Grace means you don't get the bad things you deserve condemnation, poverty, failure, loss, or even death. But we get, here's where favor is. We get divine health, protection from God against the devil, anointing, favor, good success. And Jesus said, the life that I, the devil, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come. Whose side are we on? I'm on his side. <laughs> There's two kingdoms. You've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness and out from under the authority of Satan and translated. That's like Holy Ghost Airlines. <laughs> right out of the right out of Satan's grip. You see, you like a greased pig at the county fair. He can't hold on to you. He's, whoa, oh, I can't get him. He's got that anointing oil on him. I can't hold him. There he goes. I can't help it, y'all. I was raised in the country. But I have come. Here's where grace comes in. That you might have my life. And to have it, oh, just a little creek. Oh, an abundant river. Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Yeah. Hallelujah. Rivers of living water. That's what happens when you go to preach the gospel. Amen, Brother Curtis. Out of your belly flows rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Living water. Living water. It brings life to dry, deserted lands. Hallelujah. To those who have lost all hope and think there's no hope for them to return to God. The water of river of favor is flowing to you. Come unto me, he said. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you want to break free, a clean break from sin and sickness and disease and poverty and all kinds of stuff that's under the curse, if you want to break free from it, come. Come today. His power is here. If you've, had, if you've been troubled for weeks with problems, I know a lot of people with knee problems. We're going to call out these problems. Any kind of sickness and disease. 
No, 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 no. Don't sit there and look at me like a calf at a new gate. Praise God. Hallelujah. God wants to do something right now in this house. We're not here to play games. I hope you didn't come to get entertained. Praise God. I hope you're here to do business. You're a child of God. You're bought with the blood of Jesus. There's no need to you, for you to hang on to something that the devil put on to you. We're not waiting to get the doctor's report. You should not fear any evil report. No evil report. You should not receive any evil report. Amen. But you can have his life and have it more abundantly. You can break free. You can become a child of God. Hallelujah. You can be healed. Do not wait. Do not hesitate. Come now. Come boldly. We always say, are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Boy, God's got joy unspeakable and full of glory that he wants to pour into you. Hallelujah. He wants you to rise up. Hallelujah. And be all that you can be. Hallelujah. Be filled up. You see, we understand and we know the love of Christ which passes all human reasoning and understanding so that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Filled with all the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you feel like you've got some anointing, come. Lay hands. Hallelujah. The power of God's in this house. Right now, in the name of Jesus.
as he groped along the street with his hands stretched out for pennies or for just a bite to eat it's the story of that crippled man who met Jesus on his way with the master's touch the man looked up all the scoffers heard him say somebody touched me his name I now can see I was in darkness when Jesus found me and since he touched me I now am free one day touched a crippled man and he made him to walk again and the master saw with pleasure he had just labored not in vain just like the story of that crippled man who met Jesus on his way yes with the man touch the man looked up all the scoffers heard him say that somebody touched me oh somebody touched me for I was blind but praise his name I now can see
you know we have absolutely been in the presence of the Lord today. Amen. Thank you, Lord. No doubt about it. Jesus Christ has been in our midst. We have seen deliverance. We've seen the Spirit of God touch yes. and move and encourage and people have had yokes destroyed off of their necks, off of their bodies, off of their spirit, off of their minds. Amen. Yes. Let's give God a big God bless you for Brother Tommy. Amen. Amen. Man. Glory, glory, glory. <laughs> wow. Favor. Thank God for favor. Amen. We appreciate the Lord so much for you today. We just receive, you know, I've received healing. I'm, I, and I'm everyone that came up here, I just said, I received their healing. Yes. Because we're yes. one, right? We're part we're of the one. body. So everyone that came up, whatever your condition was, I receive your healing just like it was me. We receive our pastor's healing. Amen. Total wholeness and wellness. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you today. Um, do we have any first-time visitors? First-time visitors? Amen. Everyone, everyone here is a second-timer, third-timer, all-timer. We thank God for you so much. Brother Tommy, God bless you. What an awesome message. Wow. Amen. That'd make a preacher want to preach and keep Amen. on preaching, right? Amen. <laughs> what an awesome, awesome, awesome message. Hey, we got, we're going to hear some more of this. Brother Tommy is going to be continuing part two of this next Sunday. How about it? Amen. Oh, that, Brother Man. See, like that old boy said in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor. Oh, we're blessed, man. We're in the midst of revival here at Tower Street Ministries. Amen. Now I want you to get on the phone. Don't you dare go this week without inviting someone to this service next Sunday because God is going to show up again and do something awesome. Yeah. I'm telling you, saints, something is happening. God is organizing the kingdom. Amen? Woo. I tell you, what an awesome, what an awesome anointing today. And we thank God for those that are, are we still on live stream? Amen. We thank God for you. And we just pray the Holy Ghost has spoken to you. We believe something awesome has happened to you today through the presence of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
praise the Lord for his goodness. All right, are y'all ready to leave? And I know some of y'all going to eat, right? Amen. I, I know Roger, yeah. We love you so much. We are blessed. We're eating twice. We've had the spiritual food, amen? Amen. Man, if you ain't, if you ain't leaving out of here with some goodies on the inside, I don't know. If, if something hasn't triggered inside of you to just thrill you about the kingdom, I don't know. Glory to God. We have been with Jesus. What an awesome message. Amen. All right, let's stand in the name of the Lord. Come on, we want to prophesy. I want you to speak life to somebody. Pastor Tommy has given us the word and quoted the word of God. Now, I want you out of your own mouth. Put a covenant in your lips. Put a covenant in your mouth. And I want you to tell somebody, I call you the whole. I call you blessed. Nothing broken. Nothing broken. Nothing missing. Nothing missing. I call you the head. I call you the head. And not the tail. Not the tail. You are the lender. You are the lender. And not the borrower. Not the borrower. You walk in plenty. You walk in plenty. Abundance. Abundance. Increase. Increase. And overflow. And overflow. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now give him a praise. Amen. Yeah. Amen.